Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and today we're gonna tap into our inner grunginess. I wanna do some intuitive painting with you today that's gonna give you some beautiful grungy kind of paintings that I know you're gonna love. I'm gonna go ahead and link all the supplies below the video because I'm introducing different things throughout the video as I'm using them, so definitely check that out. And if you love painting with me and you wanna know when new videos are posted, definitely hit that subscribe button. So let's get started. All right, so today I want to do something a little different with my intuitive painting. So paint with me. I want to try this Cotty handmade paper. And I've got a couple of these um, little sketchbooks by this same company that I got to play in too. But what I liked about this was they are 100% cotton rag. They're all sized in a tub. They are a really nice heavy weight of paper. They're not white, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be painting on top of it. Um, it's 100% recycled and 100% cotton. And I just loved all of the yumminess that kind of came along with that. That's a little different than a regular watercolor pad of paper. And this is like a 12 by 16 size. So it's a nice big size and it was perfect for my love of cutting up stuff. So I'm going to play in a, 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 a restricted color palette. I've kind of got in my mind, I actually kind of dreamed about this last night, of something in like my favorite kind of blue so, uh, sage aqua y kind of color tone. Um, I love this kind of color and, and black and I want it to be a little more minimalist and bold and so I'm going to use these two colors, but I also thought, what if some of it were nice and strong and bold and maybe some of it were like a spray paint or something like that. And then I thought, aha, you know what? I've got some of these Distress Oxide sprays, which weirdly enough, I've had these for a very long time and they've just kind of lived on my dresser over here and I don't do as many crafty things as I do art things. And in my mind, these were like for little crafty tags and things like that. But you know what? We're going to use these today. I have pulled out frayed burlap, ground espresso, and black soot to go with my black and sage blue um, blick art materials colors and you know with intuitive paintings you don't have to have anything that I'm working with I just want to inspire you to play I want to encourage you to pull out things that you don't normally do play in color palettes that maybe are outside of your comfort zone these are definitely outside of my normal colorway I want to play and just see what can I create and discover today that's my main goal what can we discover that we didn't already know or that maybe it's like something new. I just want to have some fun. And I start these paintings with the intention of cutting them up. I'm not trying to create a masterpiece on this. If I end up with a masterpiece, fantastic. If I don't, we're not sad about it because we can cut it up. And my favorite things to do, tape stuff down and reveal it when you peel the tape or cut it up. So I don't want to get hung up on is it perfect is the composition right? Oh gosh, I shouldn't have put this color there or whatever. I want to paint and play and discover and then cut wonderful things out of it when maybe I don't like the entire large thing and I end up with the most amazing pieces of art that I can frame and then I'm super happy because I had a good day of painting without the stress. It's like low pressure painting and then you know this is how you get to new collections and new colorways that you love. It's how I get to new classes that I want to teach. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking that we've got the blank page you know a little bit of blank page paralysis going here. So my favorite way to fix blank page paralysis is to get a pencil and do some scribble. And I want this to be maybe some kind of bold abstract. That might not be what I end up with, but that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> and I've just taped this down with artist tape. This paper has a really nice torn paper edge, but I think in the end we're probably not going to see it, but that's okay. This is a water-soluble pencil probably. Um, it's 12B might not be um, just very bold I picked the boldest one I could find let's see is this one water soluble I could get a paintbrush and just test it out I don't remember 
Okay, so it moves around a little bit. Not too bad. I wouldn't call that actually like water soluble though. The water soluble ones really move around. Or it could be the paper I'm using. Um, this one is the Fiber Castell. It's the water soluble. Let's see the difference there. Oh yeah, see, that's definitely water soluble. We're gonna say that just smudged any <laughs> graphite that was sitting on top. Um, so very interesting, a little experiment there just happened to be the pencil I pulled out. So what if, to go along with this not water soluble, we do some water soluble mark making and get that kind of bold dark blackness that I was thinking I wanted. Whoa, man. I do love water soluble graphite. Oh, I could just do a million of these. So eventually you're probably gonna see a million intuitive paintings on my YouTube channel because it's my favorite way to paint. Okay, so let's get this started. And I've got some tools over here that I could use to drag stuff. Like I could drag with a um, catalyst wedge. I could drag with some of these wedges that have little um, cutouts on them. Um, I could just be real creative here on what we're wanting and maybe we'll start off with some of this oxide spray. Ooh, see, now look at that. Now I'm kind of feeling like let's get that wedge out. Okay, so the oxide spray is fun and a little different because it's water activated. So I could do that and come back and throw some water on it. And then let that dry and we will have some yummy speckled goodness going on here. Um, so that was the black. Shake these before you use them. This is espresso. I don't know, do I want to put the brown in there or not? Oh, just as like a little buffer on the color. Ooh, look at that. That was kind of a kind of a surprise color. Check out that. It's kind of a light coffee color, but let's just move that around with our wedge. And we can have some areas of splatter, but I don't necessarily want it all to be lots of splatter. And this burlap kind of looks like that green I like so much. So I feel like, like this could be a color that maybe separates out into other colors. And you gotta be careful when you're using paints that spray, because you're gonna have overspray onto your desk and stuff. So cover and protect your clothes and anything that maybe you don't want that overspray to hit. All right, let's just activate these with a little bit of water. All right, so that's a nice grunged up start here to our piece. So at this moment that we're all kind of doubting uh-oh, what are we going to end up with? I'm right there with you. I'm doubting with you. <laughs> right there with you, peoples. I'm doubting too. All right, so let's put out this yummy blue. Oh, this color is so beautiful. You may have to let this layer dry a bit, so just judge that as you're painting. And then this is black. And then we've got it on our finger. Let's get it off our finger. What if... We use a catalyst wedge to add some color. You can do it with a paintbrush too, but I'm kind of thinking, see, I need to let this dry. Okay. Kind of thinking though, maybe I need a big paintbrush. Just, and you don't be super fast. This is not how fast can I paint. This is more of what feels good today. Ooh, what if we used a fan brush? I'm all about the fan brush. Maybe let's do that in the black and see what kind of, oh, <laughs> that, that's what I wanted. Something interesting to start happening. That's pretty cool. I like that. Maybe we'll come across this way. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Today feels like a grungy day, apparently. That's okay. Sometimes grunge is fun. Oh, and let's make some marks. We could do some fun little marks. Let's see. Where do I want this? Let's see. Let's do some happy little marks right here. Instead of happy little trees, we got happy little marks. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. We're going to lean into the grunge because now we're feeling that this, this has got some lovely grunge. I don't know if you can, I can't 
pick it up because I didn't take this to a board. This little area right here is super lovely. And I think it's going to be really lovely when it dries. Okay, let's, let's do that. I'm liking that. We're getting a little drier. Let me dry this a little with my heat gun. And now that some of this these uh, oxidizing sprays have started to dry um, I can see the oxidation is what that it's kind of what these are meant to do these distress oxide sprays they're meant to create some like metal oxidation kind of looks these are beautiful like this up here and this yummy green that's coming through like it's that copper verdigris color oh my gosh I mean the under little parts of that are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it almost makes me want to add more of that. I actually think on this pretty blue, I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to get out some white paint. I've just got titanium white here and put some of that out on our palette. And I'm kind of thinking that let's just get a big paintbrush. Okay. It's just one of my older paintbrushes, Princeton Umbria. This is a Filbert 5 8 inch. But I'm kind of feeling like, oh, you know what else I like to do more than anything is I like to mix in <laughs> gesso with my white paint, with my paints. Because, but I think I'm going to get the clear gesso since I put white paint out. But sometimes I use the gesso as my white because it's basically acrylic paint with a lot of grit in it so that we can um, put things on top. So we're going to mix, we're going to mix this gesso with this pretty yummy color and maybe come out and start doing some painting. Yes, that's the color I wanted. Something lighter to contrast the dark. My goal here is not to paint over everything that I've done. The goal is just to lay down some color and see what feels good and if i wanted to be um i was kind of thinking in my mind bold and geometric but as i'm painting it's not necessarily coming out bold or geometric so i'm just gonna go with the flow because when we cut this up man this stuff over here is so pretty when we cut this up later we'll end up with some super fun stuff Hopefully. <laughs> and if we don't, we have collage paper. Always look at this as I can always cut it up. So I'm not trying to create some masterpiece with the intuitive paintings. I'm doing this to play with supplies and learn and figure things out. So I can always cut it up. And even if I don't love it, can always be collage paper. So there's multiple uses for these things and it doesn't always have to be some amazing masterpiece that we're painting. Somebody mentioned on the comments of one of my other videos that they'd be afraid to cut stuff up. And I'm like, well, start the painting knowing that you're gonna cut it up and then it gets easier. Um, if you truly love the big piece, then don't cut it up. You know, that's that's the beauty of intuitive painting. Go with the flow. But if you're like, oh, I want to test these out. I want to start practicing new stuff. I want to figure out what it is that, you know, some of these materials I have do. I want to experiment. Then start off painting with that intention. Have some fun. Loosen up. This is a good way to loosen up. Look how these distressed oxides are picking up in the paint that I'm putting on top of it. <laughs> See, this is how you discover this stuff. Like, look at that. I've picked up the oxide underneath into this paint, and I'm kind of got the blue in there, but I'm just kind of coming back on top with the white and the clear, and it's doing some funky stuff, like some in a good way. And you know, what you create might not look anything at all like what I create. This is not about copying what I'm doing. I mean, copying is definitely a good way to learn. And it's very flattering when you want to do the exact same thing that somebody else is doing. But this is the way that you figure out what you like and want to do. So, you know, loosen up on some of this and don't get so hung up in 
I couldn't get it exactly like you did it, or I didn't have the same supplies you had. Let's get a fan brush again. Let's get that fan brush back out. What did I do with that? Let's see. Where did we put that? Oh, here we go. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> the sound adds to it. You should totally make noises. This is clear just so. I'm just kind of seeing what happens if I push this around. Look at the yummy. Look at that. Okay, let's go back with some black. Just cause. Let's grunge this up a little bit. What do I want to do? Rawr. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. there we go. <laughs> and don't be so hard on yourself. Somebody else said, mine never looks like yours. You know what? Yours is not supposed to look like mine. It's supposed to look like you and what you can create. And it doesn't have to be what looking like something that I created. And... Just because it doesn't look like mine doesn't mean it's not just as amazing when you're done. Don't get hung up on some of these things. Okay, I'm not feeling way more black there. What what are we feeling? Because, man, I'm loving all this right here. Now I'm like, oh, don't cover all that up. All right, so what if we do some stencil work on top of this? Because I got lots of good stencils. And... I think they're calling to come out and play like I love this one this is a new stencil that we did in art hall and it is the crafters workshop TCW456S as in stencil let's do some stenciling okay so I've got some little art sponges that I've cut into quarters and I'm feeling like we're gonna come back on here and these work really good dry sponge dry paint and then you can dab it, you can spread it like I'm spreading it, but I have really good luck. Ooh, ho, 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 look what that just did. Oh, okay, now I'm feeling better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these do really good spreading them around too, not just dabbing them. Oh my gosh, that totally made the whole piece for me. <laughs> look at that. Oh my goodness, okay. Totally hit the microphone, but oh. These moments are what I live for with the art table. Oh, those are so good. Okay. And we could have done that with a brush. Like we could have taken an old credit card and dipped it in some paint and kind of did this mark. Let's just do that because I said it. So we could take like, oh, let's do that with white. How about white? All right. So, yes, one of my favorite little techniques, an old card that you're no longer using. Oh, see, look at that. Just keep dipping that in the paint. Totally same, almost identical look. So you don't have to have stencils to do some of this stuff. You know, get creative with your mark making stuff. Get out some old credit cards um, or gift cards or stop at a little store that's got some of these plastic gift cards and just uh, get a couple of those. Somebody gives you a gift card at Christmas. Don't throw it out. Keep it for your art stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. I love this stencil. <laughs> Those are super cool. So, okay. All right, let's move on to another. Let's move on to another stencil. I got all kinds of good stuff in here that came in my last art haul. Um, so, let's take a look here. Ooh, ooh I love halftone circles and this uh, halftone circle one by um, the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous. This is the halftone layered stencil. I love halftone circles. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So what are we feeling? Are we feeling white halftone circles or black halftone circles? I'm kind of feeling white. What do you think? I'm kind of feeling white. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the other side of this sponge I was already using. I don't mind if I get any kind of color uh, bleed through. And it kind of keeps the sponge moist until I can set it in some water or go wash it off. Let's see what we got. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is almost as good as Punchinella. These, you might dab it if you don't want it to you know, go up underneath the stencil and make your circles less exact. Maybe you want exact yummy circles. Oh, look how pretty that is. Burr, love that. 
And you can see how fast I'm going. I'm not making intentional decisions to be like, this has got to go here for the composition or whatever, because when we're all done, I'm going to take like a little viewfinder and search out little compositions that are like super interesting. Now, I'm really loving this. I'm almost wondering if I had something that I could do like a big bold shape. Oh yeah, I'm kind of feeling that. I know I've got a big stencil here actually that I might consider using. Let me dig it out of my stencil stash down here. I've got this big one that I've not ever used. And I kind of like the center part of this. So rather than take it out, because these are made where you can take them out, I think I'm just going to use the center part of that and leave it as a big stencil. So this is a Stencil Girl stencil. L863 uh, Smith. So it's probably L863S on their site. Um, but I'm kind of feeling like a bold something. So do we want this bold something to be in black? I kind of feel like maybe black. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like black. All right, so let me get let me get a dry stencil. I don't want to have a wet stencil, but let's do a dry stencil. And we are just going to dab this in here. Since it's so big, I don't want to smudge it around and get it all up under there. This is a big stencil. First time I've tried this stencil. And I'll be honest, I looked at it and thought, ooh, that's bigger than I thought. How am I ever going to use that? But looky here. Already using it. <laughs> All right. Let's see what that did. Okay. Scared. Oh. Oh, see, now that's kind of fun. I actually kind of feeling like maybe a little bit of that over here. Maybe not all the way to the top. But maybe so it's not like sitting over there lonely all by itself. Let's see. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, I'm looking at this just like you are, kind of doubting myself. <laughs> All right, what else could we do on top of this? So, at this point, we could either let it dry and start hunting out interesting compositions, and then we could do some mark making on top as a finished thing. Um, we could come back and start mark making on it with, say, a Posca pen because but you want your paint to be pretty dry when you start posca pen mark making um so i actually have this is my super fine tip my extra fine um, i also have some bigger posca pens this one i showed in an art haul this is a bigger tip and i also have some great big tips so like this is a great big fat tip so i could do that um so I almost feel like this is like a creamy color instead of white now. Even though I did white on it, it feels creamy colored. So do we want to try this kind of creamy colored Posca pen? Because I've got a couple cream ones in here that I haven't even tried that I thought, you know, could be cream. Because this is the beige. This is probably like ivory. Yeah, beige and ivory. So it could be like an ivory color, but you see how that's kind of a... That's a tip in between this great big tip, which is in between this little fine tip. So definitely some differences there on uh, tip sizes there with our Posca pens. Um, hmm. All right, so we're going to have to let this dry before we make this final decision. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got this dried. Let's go ahead and peel some tape because I want to be able to move this around to actually look at it. And this this paper buckles pretty good. Like there's some definite waviness in this paper. Some of the buckling settles down when it, the paint dries. And then sometimes, you know, you're going to look at that and think, okay, that's too wavy. And what you need to do is stack this under some heavy books to flatten it out for a couple days. So if you've used enough wet liquid on here and you don't like the buckling, uh, put it under something heavy for a few days and just forget about it for a couple days and then that'll flatten it back out. But do it when you're done or if it's too wavy and you want to wait until you're done. Look at that. I mean, that's pretty amazing, kind of just like it is. I almost feel like what would it look like if we turned it other directions? So... 
if you had taped this down to a board, which is what I usually do, I don't know why I didn't do that today, you could turn it around as you're painting stuff. But let me tell you, as we were already looking in a viewfinder, these are just pre-cut mats that I got at the art store or framing store. Um, or you could cut out of a piece of watercolor the size that you're looking for and use that as a viewfinder. Look at that right there. <gasps> Look at that right there. Um, and then you could kind of cut out a little collection. And the bigger the paper that you do this with, the more opportunities to search out and cut things up. So I tend to keep these a piece of paper that I can film, but I could probably have done a 22 by 30 on my table. Um, so I might get some larger paper. I actually have a big pad that's pretty close to 22 by 30. It might be like 20 by 30 by Canson. That's a good way to do it. What I like about this uh, Cotty paper is that it was pretty cheap. Um, it was like a little over, there's like 20 sheets in here, I think. And that was like maybe 30 bucks, $35, somewhere in there. So it's a little over a dollar a sheet. That's a pretty big piece of paper. Super heavy weight. It's such a nice weight. And then we're going to get like a whole little collection out of this. So I actually kind of love that little thing there. I love this area here. I love a lot this. I like love, love. Like that right there definitely something we're cutting out. So this is a double mat. So what I could do is use the larger one to do the cutout and then you could frame it. Um, so what are we feeling like right there? I'm kind of feeling like right there. <laughs> That's amazing. So I could actually use the larger one to get my my uh, pencil line and then I just take a pencil on something like this and a pair of scissors and cut that out with some scissors. Look at that. Oh, let's just go ahead and cut that out and then we'll come back to the other pieces. So I'm gonna search out and do some cutting. Oh my gosh, and I like cutting it a little tiny bit bigger than what I expect my end piece to end up as, so that gives us enough space to frame it, which is why I want that little bit larger upper mat for this. But look at that if we frame that out. That's amazing. Amazing. That's exactly what I wanted. I actually don't feel like that needs any extra mark making, but this would be the time to start mark making. And I'm going to go ahead and search out more pieces in this and see. Maybe I want two this size if possible and then smaller pieces. I don't know. We'll see. See, like that right there. Would that be a pretty companion. I'm kind of feeling like it would. At this point, I'm also looking at composition. I'm looking at the way stuff is coming in the frame. I'm repositioning it slightly. Like, is this a little bit better over this way or do I need more of this coming in the frame? I'm kind of feeling like right there. I like how this is off to the side. There's nothing like that's really dominant and centered in the wrong place. I'm loving that. So I'm kind of feeling like that right there. All right, let's cut this out. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Ooh, I can even turn it that way. Look at that. Oh, okay, I actually like it this way. This is the way this one goes. Oh, yummy piece to go with that one. So I've got two of these. I really like the way this paper feels. It's like a piece of cloth almost. Oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. Now let's cut out some little pieces. I can do little squares, I can do little rectangles. I've got a smaller one here, because look at this right here. Definitely feeling that right there. Look at that. That right, ooh, that right there. Oh, I love it. All right, so we're gonna cut this one here. Oh, look at this one. Oh my gosh. And I don't even worry about my mats getting dirty because I just use these to cut out. But look at that one. Oh my goodness. That one is amazing. All right. Do we have one more <laughs> amazing piece in here? Oh my goodness. That one is amazing. And if you hunt it out and you're like, I don't see any more, you could look at it and think, okay, what 
other work could I do with these? Do I need to do more stenciling? Do I just want to save this? Look at that. I'm kind of liking that right there. What do you think? I like that big, bold, dynamic shape coming in. I like this little bit of this coming down here. Let's just cut that one anyway. If you're like, I don't know, just cut it and then decide later. Or save it for a big piece of collage paper. Or maybe this would be the one, the last that you're not sure. That could be the one that you're like, okay, let's do a little extra work to it and finish it off. Maybe that's the unfinished piece that needs some extra work. Because these first three, I think these first three pieces for me are finished. But this could be the one that we're like, oh, I need some extra work on it. Actually, now that I'm looking at that other one and I'm looking at this, I kind of think of what I can do here. All right, so this, this might be some extra collage paper. It might be a piece of paper that you put in, say, um, a palette book where you're keeping track of color palettes. That might be something that you could save for that. So don't throw anything away. This is good left over. This right here might be a good bookmark. Like, check it out. Let's do that. And I know people don't read books anymore, but I read books. So I'm looking at things a lot of times thinking, ooh, good bookmark. <laughs> and then it's like you got a little piece of your art with you when you're reading. You could put a little hole in the top with a ribbon. Look at that. That's a pretty bookmark. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And I am feeling like this one could use a little something else. So maybe this one is not finished. What if this is what I'm thinking that it needs? What if we go back to this yummy stencil here and give it this little extra bit like right here feeling like that could do it so let's move all our little window cutouts out of the way get us a fresh sponge maybe a little extra blue paint don't try to be careful somebody mentioned that they wanted to see my wood top so I thought okay for this video we'll leave the wood top showing but here's a funny thing about this wood top is it's a vinyl backdrop that I film on and when it gets super duper dirty I just take it off and replace it with a new one <laughs> all right let's get this going I want some right in here I'm feeling it oh <gasps> see that little extra touch of something all right I'm loving that oh yeah see I'm feeling that look at that okay so for the moment I'm gonna consider these finished look at these two <laughs> I can't even tell you how much I love this one here and then I've got a little pair and how much I love this one here so all in all that was a good art painting day. And I know that you doubted just as much as I doubted because I was making a mess there with some dark colors. But we're going to call this a yummy grunge collection. I can't wait to see what you're painting. So I hope you enjoyed some of the paints that we played in today. Don't be afraid to substitute anything that you have on hand to do some projects like this. And I'll see you the next time I have an intuitive painting to do.